Welcome to the Monk 1 to 90 Leveling Skills Guide. In this guide, we'll cover all of your skills as you train to incorrect Blitz input better than the rest of them, but also hopefully kill your enemies along the way. Watch as you go from this... to this. This series is framed in the mindset of players completely new to Final Fantasy XIV or the MMO genre in general, or generally still inexperienced. In that same vein, this will merely be an overview of the actions and how to use them. Optimal rotations are better left to their own in-depth videos just due to how much complexity is involved in perfect openings and overall rotations. This is not meant to be purely optimal guiding. If you wish to be optimal at level cap, there are further places you can research your job on. We will, however, be crafting rotations as we go to help new players understand what goes through creating openers and give them a foothold to push themselves into being able to do it on their own. The goal is to draw players in on the ground level, so they can make strides to improve themselves. All tooltips will be shown at the level cap for each section. Level 50 for A Realm Reborn, level 60 for Heaven's Word skills, level 70 for Stormblood's toolkit, level 80 for Shadowbringer's levels, and level 90 for Endwalker. I also recommend all players add Sprint and Limit Break to their hotbars, both found in the Generals tab of your Actions menu. And as for how my hotbars build? It'll make sense at 90. Just put skills on your hotbars in a way you feel comfortable using as you're leveling. Everyone has their own way of doing things. If you want more info on how I set up my UI, check the description or the card in the corner for the video on it. And keep the following in mind. Patches can change jobs still. Be sure to check the description for any patch notes for minor potency changes or skill changes or any other special notes. With all that out of the way, Let's begin. Monk is a DPS job that is power and speed distilled. What was once a fairly simple job made complex by an overwhelming number of positionals has become a complex job to play just on how the job is built, but built in a way I find fun for the very first time. Stances, buffs, tons of chakra, and the entirety of the blitz mechanic with how it fits into your rotation all while on top of being the fastest job in the game with a freeform feeling rotation. Mainly, you have two different and very important gimmicks to keep track of. Chakra from Critical Hits and your Blitz Command, your eventual big flashy gimmick. And even that has two layers. So overall, Monk is about dealing with the dance, using Chakra as you get it, and blitzing the enemy where you can. Which ultimately just boils down to following your rotation mostly. The issue again being of how exactly it all fits in. To play a pugilist, you either start as one, or pick the class up in the Uldah Pugilist Guild after completion of your level 10 class quest as your first class. Let's get into the finer details of each skill. Level 1, Greased Lightning. Before we even talk about any actual attacks, we have Greased Lightning. Your recast time and auto attack speed is 5% faster than any other class or job. This is completely passive and immediately puts Pugilist on a slightly steeper learning curve than any other melee, but only very slightly. For this reason, I will not be noting recast timer and global cooldown timings outside of Grease Lightning or Special Circumstances. Just realize you are lower than a normal 2.5 second recast for the global cooldown, and it will get faster in later levels. Level 1, Boot Shine. Our initial basic attack. Spam this on enemies until we level up a bit. It does 180 potency of damage to the target. Just Boot Shine forever. However, when we get our next skill at level 4, we have to make note of Boot Shine's additional effect. Changes form to Raptor. Level 4, True Strike. This attack can only be used in Raptor form which, as we just mentioned, is granted by Boot Shine. This does 270 potency of damage to a target. This, in essence, is a combo. All melee-based jobs have combos that light up with flashing borders for combo continuations. However, Monk is much more interconnected with different layers of skills, which will become clear as we get more of them. For now, just alternate Boot Shine and True Strike back and forth. And take note of True Strike's changes form to Curl. Level 6, Snap Punch. This can only be used in the Curl form, granted from True Strike. 
This is a dual layered skill. It does 220 potency of damage unless you damage from the flank or sides of the enemy, in which case it will do 280 potency of damage. This is one of two positionals for Monk. Note the picture on screen. This denotes the flanks, the red portions. Always try to aim to be on the flanks for snap punch. When playing solo, don't really bother trying for positionals unless the enemy stops to cast something. They're going to just turn towards you before you get the chance. Snap Punch has the additional effect of changing you to Opo Opo form, which returns us nicely back to Boot Shine. When in Opo Opo form, Boot Shine has a bonus effect. It is guaranteed critical damage, or an at least 40% damage increase, which that is pretty significant. And so now we have a full string of attacks that constantly loop into itself. Rather than multiple combos or combo strings, Monk is one infinite length combo in essence. When you finish a combo and return to the beginning, you are still getting some kind of combo bonus. Keep these forms in mind going forward. Opo Opo, Raptor, Curl, and then back to Opo Opo. These forms are key for why Monk is extremely freeform rotation-wise. And also note that your forms all last for 30 seconds. There are very few places this 30 second timer will ever come into play. At level 8 we have the roll action Second Wind. All of your roll actions are extremely important, useful, and should be used. Put these on your bars. But I will not be going over them. If you wish to hear about the uses of these skills, head below or to the card in the top right to see a video on melee roll actions. We also have Leg Sweep at level 10, and Bloodbath at level 12. Level 15, Meditation. This is a class quest skill. You cannot use it at all without doing your class quests. This is an extremely important reason to be doing them. Please do get your skills. In the top left is a denotion of this. I will not be verbally mentioning class or job quest lock skills in future, but this will always be there in the top left when relevant. Before talking about the skill, check our new UI element, the Chakra Gauge. It has five circles of chakra. You need all five chakra filled to be able to use any skills tied to it. Meditation is one way to get chakra. The skill has two layers. To start, it has a global recast timer of one second, but should never be used inside of combat unless you physically cannot attack any enemies. Let's take Trials later in the game, for example. Bosses have invulnerability sections or leave the arena entirely. This is where you can use Meditation mid-fight. But if you can hit enemies, don't use this mid-fight. Outside of battle, meanwhile, it automatically fills all five chakra with one button press. Before every single fight, be sure to hit Meditation to get your chakra, which, when you have five of five chakra, Meditation will turn into the next skill. Level 15, Steel Peak. This is an ability not on the global cooldown that weapon skills are on, which means you can weave it or use it between two global attacks. Upon using it, you will lose all five chakra and revert the skill back to Meditation. It does 180 potency to a single target. While 180 is small on its own, it can be used between your form-based skills, as I said. And so you're losing no time between your attacks and gaining free damage. You'll get one of these every individual battle, so long as you use meditation between groups of enemies. As a result, it adds up quickly to a lot more damage. Later on, this skill is going to become extremely more important. Get used to using it as much as you can early on without using Meditation mid-combat, of course. Level 18, Twin Snakes. This is a Raptive Form skill, pairing with True Strike. You can only use this after Boot Shine, and it grants Curl Form for using Snap Punch after. It does 250 potency of damage, but also grants the buff Disciplined Fist. This buff increases all damage you do by 10% for 15 seconds. You absolutely want to keep this buff up at all times. If you don't put it up, you're automatically doing far less damage than you should be. 
The fact that this shares a form with True Strike is also notable. True Strike does a little bit more damage, but does not give you the buff. As a result, we want to alternate them. When you reach your Raptor form, use Twin Snakes to put up your Disciplined Fist buff. Then the second time, use True Strike to do a bit more damage. Then the third time around, use Twin Snakes to maintain your buff, and alternate. Alternating these two skills back and forth creates a ratio of two. Every second combo, you use True Strike. Keep this ratio in mind as we continue. This will be important later. Level 20, Enhanced Greased Lightning. Welcome to Greased Lightning 2. Recast time and auto attack delay are now reduced by 10% naturally. On screen is Bootshine, for example, and the auto attack comparisons between a normal job and Monk. At level 22, we have Faint, my favorite role action. Level 26, Arm of the Destroyer. This is our first AoE, Area of Effect, Attack, and it is within the Opo Opo category with Bootshine. It does 100 potency to all enemies within 5 yams of yourself, so you want to head into the middle of enemy packs to hit the most enemies. Within Opo Opo form, it does an additional 10 potency per enemy. This won't matter for a while as you can only keep hitting arm for AoE. On three or more enemies, this is basically the only attack you need. You can also take an attack to put up Disciplined Fist, but otherwise, three enemies, this is the only button you want to be pressing until at least one of them dies. Once you're down to two enemies left, return to your single target skills and take out whatever remains. The more enemies there are, the better and the more you want to be using your AoE. Level 30, Demolish. This is a second skill for your Coral form, to be paired with Snap Punch, and seems extremely weak. It does 40 potency of damage, and 100 when used from the rear of the enemy, which the rear is denoted by the picture's red portion on screen. Like normal, this advances you to Opal Opal, but also has one more effect. This places a damage over time, or dot, effect on the enemy. It does 70 potency of damage for 18 seconds. Dots do damage every 3 seconds, so this one will hit 6 times for a total of 420 potency of damage. Add in the 40 or 100 potency from the initial hit, and this can pass over 500 potency, which is a lot. If an enemy will live for over 9 seconds, be sure to put this on them, and put it on as many targets as you can. And due to the length of the dot, if there is only one target, you want to use Demolish every three combos. Demolish, Snap Punch, Snap Punch, Repeat. This creates a ratio of three. Combined with our Raptor ratio, we have a two and a three ratio. Again, keep this in mind for later, for now, just keep in mind that you want this dot running on enemies that will be living for a while. Now, we don't have many buttons, basically nothing, but I did want to officially do a rotation just to get you thinking about it. So let's just quickly talk about it, and keep the following in mind. Openers are a single target affair. AoE rotations tend to be extremely simple and just following as similar rules to the single target openers. Buff up, then unleash your big attacks. Boot shine. Twin Snakes, Demolish, Steel Peak, Bootshine, True Strike, Snap Punch, Bootshine, Twin Snakes, Snap Punch, Bootshine, True Strike, Demolish, Bootshine, Twin Snakes, Snap Punch, Bootshine, True Strike, Snap Punch, then repeat from the beginning without the Steel Peak. So here we can see the idea in action. Alternate your Raptor form, and use Demolish every third combo, with Demolish being first because we want it up. And this entire picture, minus Steel Peak because you only ever get one of these right now, is an entire full rotation for Monk. Six cycles through your forms will bring you back to the beginning. Get used to this sooner than later, and it will get much more to handle later. To obtain the Monk Stone, you must reach level 30 and complete the level 30 Pugilist quest. Additionally, complete the main scenario quest, Self-Management. 
which is at level 20 in the story. Return to the guild and the quest should be there for you. Level 30, Rockbreaker. This is our curl form AoE. It does 130 potency to all enemies within 5 yams of you. If an enemy will live for the full 18 seconds, Demolish is stronger on up to 4 enemies, and you can maintain it on up to 3 enemies. However, typically enemies will die way faster than you may expect. As a result, it's often just more effective to follow the 3 enemy rule. If there are 3 enemies or more, use Rock Breaker. The issue is, for the next 15 levels, two of our forms have AoE only. Opo Opo and Curl have one, but Raptor does not. As a result, during AoE situations, we have to use a filler single target attack. Ideally, this is time spent on Twin Snakes for Disciplined Fist. And like normal, you alternate with True Strike just for the little bit of extra damage. Maintaining Disciplined Fist is worth it especially if you started to get tanks who pull a lot of enemies at once. At level 32 is the roll action, Arm's Length. Level 35, Thunderclap. This is a movement ability with charges. Rather than having a singular cooldown, you can store up to two charges. You can spend them back to back if need be. The moment you use the first charge, the charge timer begins. Thunderclap's charge time is 30 seconds for a total of 60 seconds for the two charges. It has a range of 20 yams, which is fairly huge, and it teleports you near instantly to the target. This can be used on enemies or party members. If you're falling behind the tank because for some reason you're not using Sprint, because you really should be using Sprint when they do, Thunderclap. If the boss is doing some giant AoE that you must dodge far for, wait for the cast bar to get halfway completed, then select a party member who is already outside the AoE and Thunderclap to them. The moment the AoE indicator is gone, Thunderclap back to the boss. There are plenty of other specific uses, but all of them boil down to fast movement, far. And for as much as I enjoy New Monk, Thunderclap is definitely the coolest new addition. Level 38, Deep Meditation. Grease Lightning isn't the only trait we get. Deep Meditation is a huge buff to our Chakra Gauge. Every critical hit you do with a weapon skill, your GCDs, has an 80% chance to give you a Chakra, which means on average, every six critical attacks will be an entire extra use of Steel Peak. It's no longer a skill that you use one time per fight. You may get several uses in any individual fight. This is especially true in boss fights since keep in mind, Boot Shine is a guaranteed critical hit. Every six Boot Shines on average is a guaranteed Steel Peak. Plus, all your other attacks have the random crit chances. You still only want to hit Meditation between pools and during any Force Downtime in fights, but now that isn't the only way you're getting Steel Peaks. Get watching your gauge and listen for the chime to use Steel Peak the moment you hit 5 Chakra. Level 40? Enhanced Greased Lightning 2. And another trait, we have Greased Lightning 3. We now have a permanent, passive, 15% reduction to our global cooldown and auto attack delay. For comparison, Reaper and Dragoon have no form of speed boost built into their job. Well, Reaper has an Enshroud phase, but that's a burst. Samurai has a 13% buff that they have to maintain. Very easily, but maintain it. And Ninja has a buff to maintain too, for 15% speed boost. Meanwhile, Monk has it passively and permanently. Level 40, Howling Fist. This is an AoE form of Steel Peak. It shares the same cooldown, which is only one second anyway, and spends all five of your chakra. It does 100 potency of damage to all enemies in a 10 yom line in front of you. So you do have to aim this a bit differently than your normal AoE attacks. It involves a little dancing in and out of enemies, but it's not anything too difficult. If there are two or more enemies, rather than the three for your main attack, use Howling Fist instead of Steel Peak. And of course, three or more, this is extremely better than Steel Peak. This two level section has basically been really shift your focus to Chakra, and it will continue to be important 
and get even stronger later. Level 42, Mantra. On a 90 second cooldown and having a 15 yom range, you and all allies affected will be given 10% extra healing from all heals for 15 seconds. The easiest way to see this for yourself is with Second Wind. Use it, mark down the healing amount, then use again in 2 minutes with Mantra up. The uses of this are pretty obvious. Anywhere major healing is needed. If a boss is doing big raid-wide damage, maybe even multiple times in a row, pop Mantra to make the healers have an easier time. A more quote-unquote hidden use, though, is in dungeons. Just because it is a large area of effect doesn't mean it needs to be used as such. Use it on just the tank. If it isn't already clear, it will later become clear that a lot of tanks like to pull big. Two groups, three groups, or if possible, even four groups of enemies. This leads to enemies doing a lot of damage to the tank very quickly. You can help out by hitting Mantra between attacks. That little bit of healing can be a big help in the right situations. Level 45, Four Point Fury. Now we have our full AoE rotation. Four Point fills in our Raptor form with a 120 potency AoE, same as the other two. However, this also grants Disciplined Fist. When encountering three or more enemies, there's now no reason to touch any of your single target attacks. Aside from maybe Demolish if you think you can get the full duration on three enemies, but otherwise for groups, you just rotate through your AoE buttons forever in the infinite combo that is Monk. At level 50, we have our final roll action, True North. Level 50, Dragon Kick. We have our final main attacking button finally. Dragon Kick fills in our partner to Bootshine in the Opo Opo form. It deals a nice 290 potency of damage to a target and does the usual form shifting. When in Opo Opo form, from after using Curl form skills, it grants Leaden Fist for 30 seconds. Leaden Fist is a buff to Bootshine. Bootshine now has an additional line of Leaden Fist potency. Bootshine does 280 potency, only 10 less than Dragon Kick, and has the guaranteed critical hit when following the forms. Using Bootshine also immediately spends the Leaden Fist buff, so you only get the one use. As a result, we want to alternate these skills back and forth when reaching the Opo Opo form. Use Dragon Kick for Leaden Fist, go through Raptor and Curl forms, then Bootshine for the critical hit. This creates a ratio of two. Let's bring back those other two ratios we had. Raptor also had a ratio of two, and Curl had a ratio of three. This creates what I call the 2-2-3 ratio, and is the fundamental building block of how to play Monk in normal circumstances. You alternate attacks in Opo Opo form, alternate in Raptor form, and in Curl we use Demolish every three attacks, assuming it is only one enemy. Two enemies, it's still a ratio of three, but using Snap Punch once instead of twice. For example, let's pretend we're mid-battle and this is our first combo. Then Ratio dictates our next combo will be... Second combo. Third combo. Fourth combo. Fifth combo. Sixth combo. And the seventh combo is the same as our first one. This golden ratio sums up the basic rotation of Monk you're going to follow to level cap. Well, we're gonna get more cooldowns, burst phases with additional skills, but when all of that is done and gone, we return to our 2 2 3 ratio. And even during those big burst sections, where we are within the ratio is important. And we'll see this as we go on. Keep it in the back of your mind and take things one step at a time. Level 50, Perfect Balance. This is going to become a main gimmick for our job later, so get used to perfect balance now. This has charges and can store up to two of them, on a 40 second charge time. You can only use this once getting into combat. Upon using it, you will be given three stacks of perfect balance to use within the next 20 seconds. Perfect balance stacks remove all form requirements and will proc all form bonuses. For example, we can go right into Demolish without doing True Strike or Twin Snakes. Bootshine and Dragon Kick will crit and give Lead and Fist respectively. 
and this last example is the most important use of it for single target. Other than Demolish being up on a boss, your strongest attacks are Dragon Kick and Boot Shine, so the ideal use of Perfect Balance is to alternate back and forth between them. The problem is once Perfect Balance ends, you are formless, so you must restart the rotation from your Opo Opo form to continue. Another problem is also wanting to maintain your timers during Perfect Balance. You don't want Disciplined Fist to fall off in the middle of Perfect Balance. If you're letting Demolish fall off the boss, you're losing damage, so you need to strike a balance. The opening will show off one such balance. For AoE, spam Rock Breaker, go through one time, Armor Destroyer, 4 Point Fury, Rock Breaker, then hit Perfect Balance to make it 4 Rock Breakers in a row. Go through the full rotation of skills again afterwards to maintain Disciplined Fist, and Perfect Balance the second time around. Alright, so now let's talk about our opener at level 50. The goal is to maintain our buffs and use Perfect Balance for spamming our Bootshine and Dragon Kick back and forth. The second part is extremely important to get used to. We're going to drop by Demolish for a few seconds just to have you practice doing Perfect Balance closely together. If you want to not drop that, delay your second Perfect Balance to when your combo includes both Twin Snakes and Demolish and doing it after that. Pre-pull, Meditation, Dragon Kick, Twin Snakes, Demolish, Steel Peak, Dragon Kick, Perfect Balance, Boot Shine, Dragon Kick, Boot Shine, Dragon Kick, Twin Snakes, Snap Punch, Dragon Kick, Perfect Balance, Boot Shine, Dragon Kick, Boot Shine, Dragon Kick, Twin Snakes, Demolish, Dragon Kick, then continue on to into 2-2-3 two, two, ratios. There's a couple things going on here. We start the rotation with Dragon Kick because it's a much higher base potency than Bootshine. Anytime we lack a form, Dragon Kick starts us off. We get up our buff like normal and put up Demolish. Steel Peak after the Demolish to ensure it's under the Disciplined Fist buff. We do one more Dragon Kick to proc Leaden Fist. With Leaden Fist stored, we go into Perfect Balance and do our alternating of buttons, starting with Bootshine to spend Leaden. Afterwards, we do another Dragon Kick because, as mentioned, Perfect Balance leaves us formless, so we have to start over. Put your Disciplined buff back up and get back to Dragon Kick to regain Leaden before our next Perfect Balance. As I mentioned before, if you're hitting this now, you will drop Demolish. You do have 40 seconds on the timer before your next Perfect Balance charge comes in, so you do have time to do a combo where you use both Twin Snakes and Demolish. Or you could use your final stack of Perfect Balance to put back up Demolish. Otherwise, it's a relatively small downtime on the dot, but it's worth thinking about if you want to improve your play. Again, this is more to specifically get you used to alternating your Dragon Kick and Boot Shine and using Perfect Balance back to back. When your third and beyond Perfect Balance come up, ensure you do time things properly. We're not going to be dealing with this specific opener for all too long anyway. Once we hit 60, all of this means nothing. That's why I'm prioritizing specific things to get your muscle memory working. Be sure to get used to Boot Shine Dragon Kick alternating and your two positionals on your curl skills. And finally, remember that you're building Chakra the entire time. While there is only one Steel Peak in this opening rotation, you might get a second one. You also might not get that second one. Every crit is a high chance for a Chakra, but we can't specifically mark down when the second or third Steel Peaks will be. Just remember to always be watching the gauge and use them as soon as possible. Now let's go through our karaoke opener. I'm going to speak the names of the skills as they are used, and because Monk is a fast job, you may hear a lot of me overlapping or cutting myself off with skill names, later on at least. That should tell you how quick you want to be putting stuff out, and how quick Monk is. But this first one though, it's pretty tame. Dragon Kick. Twin Snakes. Demolish. Steel Peak. 
Dragon Kick. Perfect balance. Boot Shine. Dragon Kick. Boot Shine. Dragon Kick. Twin Snakes. Snap Punch. Dragon Kick. Perfect balance. Boot Shine. Dragon Kick. Boot Shine. Dragon Kick. Twin Snakes. Demolish. Dragon Kick. Then 2 2 3 ratio. And again, don't get too big and used to this opener. This is only level 50. Level 60 and beyond is all very similar to each other and should be focused on more. For now, we're focusing on just the fundamentals I outlined. Can only really build them with some kind of opener. But hopefully you're getting used to the Dance of Monk. Level 52, Form Shift. A weapon skill that does no damage. What this does is grant you Formless Fist for 30 seconds, which allows you to use any of your attacks and get the Form Bonus. If you use this before a battle and start with Dragon Kick, it will actually grant you the Leaden Fist buff. This is extremely important for Monk to maintain flow. You never ever touch this mid-battle just like Meditation. The exception is the same too. If in a boss it becomes untargetable, you use Form Shift before it comes back to be able to get right back into your rotation. Pre-fight and any sort of major downtime mid-fight. Hit Form Shift to be able to do whatever you need. Level 54, Steel Peak Mastery and the Forbidden Chakra. This boils down to a simple potency boost. From 180 potency to a much higher 310 potency, the Forbidden Chakra is the same in every other way. Now it's even more important to use it any time you have full chakra. Level 60, Enhanced Perfect Balance. Okay, so this is a big one and is Monk's main mechanic now, essentially. Let's break it down one step at a time. First off, we have a second gauge now. This is the Master's Gauge with five circles. The three in the middle are a new type of chakra called Beast Chakra, and the two on the outside are called Nadi. Keep these names in mind as we go on. As for Enhanced Perfect Balance itself, using skills within Perfect Balance now grants us Beast Chakra when using skills. Each form correlates to a specific chakra. Opo Opo form skills, Dragon Kick, Boot Shine, and Arm of the Destroyer all grant Opo Opo Chakra, and so on for Raptor and Curl. Opo Opo is purple chakra, or blue depending on how your eyes are. Raptor is green, and Curl is a pinkish color. Not important to inherently remember, but if you make a mistake, this info can help you. You can also try and look at the symbols, but personally they're hard to tell what they are. And so we use Perfect Balance, use three attacks to get three chakra, and you must fill all three circles with chakra. And then what? Then we go to our next skill. Level 60, Masterful Blitz. Here on just called Blitz. Time to do your finest Sabin impression. Upon gaining three beast chakra, Blitz will turn into one of multiple different attacks. Which attack you turn it into depends on how many different beast chakra there are. One, two, or three different beast chakra is each a different skill. Each one is a global cooldown and grants you formless fist afterwards as if you had hit form shift. This makes it easier to get immediately back into your rotation. Let's start with our one chakra and three chakra options. Level 60, Elixir Field and Flint Strike. These two are essentially partners. Both do a 600 potency AoE around yourself that is 5 yams in radius, with 70% damage fall off, which translates to 180 potency of damage to the second enemy and beyond. Their effects and the way you get them are opposing though. Having only one type of beast chakra will give elixir field. Having all three types of beast chakra will give you flint strike. Elixir Field will grant you the Lunanadi, the one on the left. Flint Strike grants the Solanadi, the one on the right. Getting Flint Strike is pretty simple in general. Just follow your rotation like normal after hitting Perfect Balance. You can do your forms out of order for fancy buff alignments, and I do recommend it. For Elixir Field though, 
This is why we wanted to practice that boot shine and dragon kick alternating with perfect balance. Not only is it big damage, it's the ideal way to get Elixir Field. For AoE, instead of spamming Opo Opo skills, use Rock Breaker three times to get Elixir Field. Rock Breaker is your strongest AoE move after all, which if it wasn't obvious, your AoE skills do work for generating Beast Chakra. And while it is the best use of perfect balance, we do want both Nadi. We'll talk about the reason why in a bit, but let's talk about our worst blitz. Level 60, Celestial Revolution. To access this blitz, you must have specifically two different Beast Chakra across the three you need. So one Opo Opo and two Raptor, with two Opo Opo and one Curl, etc. This does an attack for 450 potency and opens the Lunanadi. If you already have a Lunanadi, it opens the Solanadi. Now this sounds good, but it's actually the worst option. This is only when you accidentally mess up and need some sort of saving. It's only single target and 150 potency lower than the other two options for even on single target, where they were 600 potency. Remember that Elixir Field grants the Lunanadi, and Flint Strike grants the Solanadi, so you want to use them both to get one of each Nadi. You only escape into Celestial Revolution if you make a mistake in perfect balance. For example, let's say you've already gotten the Solanadi from Flint Strike, which means you need to do the Lunanadi from Elixir Field which is one type of Beast Chakra, meaning we'll do our Boot Shine and Dragon Kick alternating. And so, Perfect Balance, Boot Shine, True Strike, oops! You just made a mistake with that True Strike. You only needed Opo Opo Chakra, and now you have both it and Raptor. But you can still get your Lunanadi by using Dragon Kick and get Celestial Revolution. That is the use of this. So in summation, never Celestial Revolution. It's entirely for saving an already huge mistake. It's one of the biggest potential losses in your rotation you can make, and is why I tried to drill in earlier how important it is to get used to Boot Shine and Dragon Kick alternating. But okay, we used our Blitz twice, got the Luna and Solanadi, now what? Level 60, Tornado Kick. Blitz will become Tornado Kick no matter what when you have both Nadi filled. You need three Beast Trockers still, but it can be any combination. Elixir Field, Celestial Revolution, or Flint Strike. It will be Tornado Kick instead because you have both Nadi. But you will aim for Elixir Field because again, Opo Opo is powerful. It does an 850 potency hit to the target, and 425 potency to all enemies within 5 yams of the initial target. So you do need to aim it differently than your Nadi generators. This will grant you Formless Fist like normal, and remove both Nadi. This is what we are building up to in our rotation of Monk. This is our single biggest hit for both single target and AoE, especially for AoE. 1700 potency when using it on just 3 enemies and it gets higher and higher the more enemies you're hitting. But of course, we're not going to ignore it during the bosses. Use Perfect Balance every chance you can. And when it is the Tornado Kick tied Perfect Balance, I know I'm repeating myself a lot here, do your Boot Shine Dragon Kick alternating. While you can use any combination of Beast Chakra, that's still our best Perfect Balance option. And for AoE again, it's still Rock Breaker Spam. As for using our Formless Fist on the way out of any of our Blitz commands, where we begin can really depend on when we used Perfect Balance in a case-by-case -case basis. If Disciplined Fist is about to wear off, use Twin Snakes. If Demolish is falling off, start there. If neither is falling off, Dragon Kick or Boot Shine, depending on if you already have Lead and Fist. Similar consideration is used for AoE, but you don't really need to worry about Demolish in AoE usually. Just remember that it's allowing you to make use of any of your form bonuses. So let's talk about how this affects our opener. As I mentioned previously, this is a lot smoother and essentially the opener you're going to follow all the way up to level cap. Or at least 
one of them. This is known as the Lunar Solar Opener, but there is also the Double Solar Opener, which focuses on using Flint Strike twice in a row in the opener, then filling in your Nadi as normal for the rest of the fight. This sounds like you're going to lose a lot of potency, but it aligns the rest of your perfect balance windows with the raid buffing. Raid buffing is something that starts more heavily with level 60, and because buffs are multiplicative, using them all around the same time makes everything many times stronger. Outside a raid setting, you can't completely count on proper raid buffing, which makes me recommend the Lunar Solar Opener more for the average player. In some cases, it can even be the better opener, but that's getting into high-end min-maxing and fight alignments and all that. I do say to graduate to more advanced guides in the intro and description, but I wanted to emphasize it here due to the importance of the double solar opener's existence. So now, let's actually talk more about this specific opener, and not that one, and the skill rotations. Pre-pull, meditation, and form shift. Dragon Kick, Twin Snakes, Demolish, The Forbidden Chakra, Boot Shine, Perfect Balance, Dragon Kick, Boot Shine, Dragon Kick, Elixir Field, Boot Shine, Perfect Balance, Twin Snakes, Dragon Kick, Demolish, Flint Strike, Boot Shine, and then continue on into 2 2 3 rotation. We start the same way as before, but now our Dragon Kick actually gives Leaden Fist, so we don't need to use it twice. As a result, after the first Forbidden Chakra, we Boot Shine to use Leaden Fist. Then going into Perfect Balance, we again do the same originally. Alternate Opo Opo attacks. The difference here being we start with Dragon Kick, since we already used Leaden Fist. Things change again with the Elixir Field. Because of the Formless Fist, we don't need to Dragon Kick just to get our forms going like before. We immediately hop back into Perfect Balance for the Solar Nadi, and our skill ordering here is extra interesting. We Twin Snakes to refresh the buff, then backtrack to Dragon Kick for the Leaden Fist. This gives Demolish the most time it can before we refresh it here. It will clip just a little bit, but it's worth the refresh for raid buffs. Then, we Flint Strike to finish off Perfect Balance, and use the Formless Fist to once again Boot Shine. And then from here, as I said, it's the 2-2-3 ratio until our next Perfect Balance for Opo Opo spam. And again, this is one of two openers to follow. Keep looking further if you wish to find the Double Solar opener, but you're not missing too much in content with random players on average. Extreme or harder, it's definitely worth the research. Now, I'm not going to karaoke open to this one, since it's the same speed as the level 50 opener. We'll be back to that at level 70. Just remember, no matter what the openers say, there's always the potential for more forbidden chakras. There's no guarantee of win, but you will guaranteed eventually hit 5 chakra again and again. Up to level 70 is a big evolution in terms of your buffing and need to constantly weave in the forbidden chakra. We're going to get even more active than you already were. Level 64, Riddle of Earth. This is another charging skill. You have up to three charges for a maximum 90 seconds for charging all stacks. For 10 seconds, you are granted three stacks of Riddle of Earth, meaning you can take reduced damage, 20% less. No, this is not saying you take 60%, 40%, then 20% less damage. The problem instead is the stacks are spent as you attack. Every weapon skill will spend one of the stacks, meaning it's more like a 5 second buff due to the speed of your attacks. It balances out essentially though, because a 20% reduction is a big reduction for such a short cooldown. 30 seconds per charge is really quick. Anytime a boss is doing some form of heavy raid-wide damage or targeted damage, pop Rail of Earth to reduce it by a good chunk. It helps to heal it out a bit, especially if you're making mistakes. If you have a vulnerability stack, you can negate it by using Rail of Earth for any big hits. It could be the difference between life and death for you. It's also nice for solo content. Even a little bit of further safety is always good to have. 
20% less for any big hits will never not be nice to have. Just don't forget to use it when the time comes. Level 68, Riddle of Fire. Riddle me this. What could be better than a damage buff? On a 60 second cooldown, this increases damage dealt by 15% for 20 seconds. You should be using this on cooldown, immediately. Well, set up your Twin Snakes too, but generally as soon as possible. Do not let this remain off cooldown for long, if at all. When punching the enemy, hit this to punch harder. In the opener and every two minutes, this is even stronger because of the previously mentioned raid buffing, multiplicative buffs and all that. Be sure to keep using it over and over, especially if you're getting into blitz attacks. 15% on top of the 10% from Twin Snakes, on top of the 600 potency hit, or even your 850 potency tornado kick? Yeah, you see why the double solar opener exists now? Line things up with this where you can, for all the bigger damage. And as a monk, you are a powerhouse. Level 70, Brotherhood. Further emphasizing your power is Brotherhood. On a two minute cooldown, this has a few effects. First off, this applies Brotherhood to you and all players within 15 yams of yourself. This is a damage increase of 5% for 15 seconds. Small but notable. Secondly, we have Meditative Brotherhood for 15 seconds. This is a buff that massively buffs you. There is a 20% chance that any team member under the effect of Meditative Brotherhood, including yourself, grants you a chakra anytime they use a weapon skill or a spell. And with up to 7 other players in your party, 20% becomes a lot of chakra. Further, this does stack with your critical hit chakra. Let's take Bootshine. Using a weapon skill grants a chakra. Bootshine also is a guaranteed crit with form bonus. Critical hits can grant chakra. You can get two chakra from a single bootshine. This is on top of all the other chakra from every other attack and all the chakra from your allies. For these 15 seconds, you're going to be flooded with chakra, which means a lot of using the forbidden chakra. You're going to have to watch the chakra gauge a lot more closely any time you use Brotherhood. And being it's every two minutes, you'll be hitting the forbidden chakra a lot now. And so we should talk about that. It's going to majorly affect your opener. We have to fit in both Riddle of Fire and Brotherhood, in addition to having to deal with the major influx of chakra. Pre-pull, Meditation, and Form Shift. Dragon Kick, Twin Snakes, Riddle of Fire, Demolish, The Forbidden Chakra, Bootshine, Brotherhood, Perfect Balance, Dragon Kick, Bootshine, Dragon Kick, Elixir Field, Bootshine, Perfect Balance, Twin Snakes, Dragon Kick, Demolish, Flint Strike, Bootshine, and then continue on. We put Riddle of Fire right before Demolish to massively boost it and our first Forbidden Chakra. Brotherhood comes after our first boot shine to line up with any other party buffs, and to not do it early because if we did, well, you'd lose some chakra because of the gauge being full already. We also double weave in the Brotherhood with perfect balance. If you are clipping your GCD a lot due to latency or such, you can move Brotherhood back a little further to after the Dragon Kick. From there though, it's the same as the level 60 opener. Do the perfect balance windows the same as before, just with keeping in mind what our chakra are looking like. And so, this is basically the opener all the way up to level 90. I could do the karaoke opener here. Just, just, uh, let, let's come back to this in two levels. Two levels, really. Shadowbringers gives us the tiniest thing to change our opener. Level 72. Riddle of Wind. On a recast of 90 seconds, your auto attack delay is reduced by 50% for 15 seconds. Yes, really. That's it. Okay, more seriously, this technically is not much different from something, say, like Riddle of Fire, but it just doesn't give any real feedback like giant numbers do. But it is more damage, and when under other buffs, it's even more effective. So we use it anyway. It really does just double your auto attack damage, basically. But alright, that's the last thing for our opener. 
slotted in coincidentally in that one empty slot in the level 70 opener. As before, if you are having trouble with double weaving because of Monk's speed, move Brotherhood back to be after Dragon Kick. This is now going to move the Riddle of Wind back to after Boot Shine. So let's do the karaoke opener this time. I am also going to mention every use of the Forbidden Chakra, not just the one guaranteed use in the beginning. If I get a second Forbidden Chakra, it will be spoken, but not listed in the opener itself. Again, there's no specific guarantee of when the chakra is ready. Could get 30 chakra within one window, could get only 10. Randomness is random. Pre-pull, meditation, and form shift. Dragon Kick. Twin Snakes, Will of Fire. Demolish, the Forbidden Chakra. Bootshine, Brotherhood, Perfect Balance. Dragon Kick, Riddle of Wind. Bootshine, Dragon Kick. Elixir Field, Bootshine, Perfect Balance. Twin Snakes, Dragon Kick. Demolish, Flint Strike. Bootshine, the Forbidden Chakra, and 2-2-3 rotation. And again, that is what we follow all the way up to level 90. That doesn't mean what we are going to get doesn't massively change the job's feeling, though. It definitely will. Level 74, Deep Meditation 2. This is a tiny buff, but it is noticeable. Critical hits were an 80% chance to open Chakra. Now it's a 100% chance. Every single critical hit you get is a Chakra. Before there was that small chance Boot Shine didn't give any, now it's every time. Helpful to use the next skill. Level 74, Howling Fist Mastery and Enlightenment. This is an upgrade to Howling Fist. It goes from a 100 potency AoE to 170 potency as Enlightenment. And that's really all there is to it. Enjoy the fancy animations though. Level 76, Enhanced Greased Lightning 3. Hope you didn't get too used to being fast, because you're more fasterer. Greased Lightning 4 brings us to 20% global cooldown reduction and auto attack delay reduction. This one also comes with an additional boost though. Disciplined Fist is now 15% instead of 10% increased damage. Monk is now the fastest job in the game, but not necessarily the highest APM. Consistency and Burst are different, and Monk is consistent speed. Level 78, Anatmon. On a 60 second cooldown, this allows you to stand still for 30 seconds. No really. You stand still for 30 seconds at a maximum. This extends Discipline Fist and your current form's timer to maximum, and while standing still and channeling this, prevents them from counting down. This is extremely niche. This is the same as Form Shift and Meditation when mid-battle. You only use this when there are no enemies to hit, mostly for the trial boss's ultimate attacks. Meditate to hit Max Chakra, then pop a Notmon to pause your form and discipline fist timers. And remember, you have to stay completely still. So if there's any movement mechanics during the downtime, you're going to cancel a Notmon. Luckily, it doesn't lock you in place, just only forces you to stay still to keep the skill going. Level 80, Six-Sided Star. This is Monk's ranged attack, essentially. It has a four-second recast, with two global cooldowns, does 500 potency of damage, and increases your movement speed for five seconds. So you can stay in range of the enemy a little bit longer, use six-sided star, run out of range, and run back in and lose little to no uptime. The issue is, most of the time, it isn't a great skill for the average player. In almost all casual content, you don't need to be using this as much as you think. You have time to use a normal attack like Boot Shine, run out, and back in. Or you don't need to run out at all. The biggest trap players falls into is there is an AoE marker anywhere in the arena, I need to run away from the boss. Stand at max melee range, and you are safe is the answer 9 out of 10 times. The 1 out of 10 times? You Excited Star can move out and be safe. Just don't fall into the trap of using it every single time there's any sort of AoE appearing. It's an option for safety, 
not the default thing you should go for anytime there's any sort of dodging. More chakra, and even faster attacking, like I said. You won't be getting anything real big, but it's enough to change the feel of the job immensely, and that's kind of what's going to happen with Endwalker as well. Level 82, Arm of the Destroyer Mastery and Shadow of the Destroyer. This upgrades Arm of the Destroyer to be more in line with your normal combo strings. Shadow of the Destroyer is 110 potency, the Opo Opo bonus of Arm of the Destroyer. The Opo Opo bonus now is an automatic critical hit, just like Bootshine. Because of this, Shadow of the Destroyer is better than Rockbreaker for perfect balance. Yes, Rockbreaker is 20 higher potency, but guaranteed critical hits give you far more power on average. A crit is 40% extra power on the low end, roughly. So Shadow of the Destroyer is a 151 potency hit. This also increases your chances to direct crit, because you only need a random direct hit. It does work out to be better, so be sure to let Elixir Field in AoE be from Opo Opo. Level 84, Enhanced Thunderclap. Short, sweet, and simple. Thunderclap has up to three charges as a max. This is extremely nice to have for any big downtime part. And again, you can use this on both party members and enemies. And also kind of makes Six-Sided Star a little less useful now. Level 84, Melee Mastery. This is just a bunch of potency boosts. Bootshine is now a base 210 potency, 310 under Leaden Fist, True Strike 300 potency, Snap Punch 250, Twin Snakes 280, Demolish to 70 potency, no not the dot, that was already 70 potency, Dragon Kick to 320, Forbidden Chakra to 340, and Six-Sided Star to 550. A lot of boosts, but nothing changes. Level 86, Flint Strike Mastery and Rising Phoenix. Rising Phoenix is an upgrade to Flint Strike. It all works the same way being a 5 yom AoE around yourself, but now it does 700 potency with the same 70% drop-off. That's 210 potency to all enemies after the first. Solinati, Formless Fist, all that stuff, all the same. Just a power up. But also, this further explains why you do a double solar opener. Level 88, Enhanced Brotherhood. So remember how our opener was already super busy with Chakra? Well, now every single weapon skill we do while under Brotherhood is guaranteed to give ourselves Chakra. Yet yeah, allies are still only a 20% chance to gain, but you yourself grant yourself Chakra with every single attack guaranteed. You can now guarantee a Forbidden Chakra after 5 GCDs at most, but you can still get it earlier, so it'll be different every run still. More often, but still random. Level 90, Tornado Kick Mastery and Phantom Rush. This upgrades our Tornado Kick into Bum Rush. I mean Phantom Rush. Teleporting around allows us to do an upgraded 1,000 potency of damage to a target, and 500 potency of damage to every enemy within 5 yams of the initial target. It's otherwise the exact same skill, just a bit stronger and way cooler to look at. We may not have gotten much out of Endwalker levels specifically, but this Endwalker rework makes being Sabin even cooler than it already was. Now go learn Machinist to be your own brother. Thank you for watching this Monk 1-90 leveling skills guide. Feel free to give feedback or ask questions on what might still be confusing to you. I am always seeking to improve, as should you. Don't stop with this guide even if I succeeded in helping you improve. Please, leave a rating, comment, sub, those really do help creators. Why even go follow my Patreon. Have fun in your adventures across Eorzea, and may the power of Anna and Hogsley waste to your enemies.